Hi, I'm Father Michael Orsi. I'm your host for Action for Life Television, that good news program which brings you the big G for the gospel of Jesus Christ and the little G, all the good things that people do to put that gospel of life into action. Hey, folks, we have a uh, lovely lady with us today who is... Um, well, she writes for The Spectator. It's a great journal. I believe it comes out of Great Britain. And uh, she writes on some interesting topics. There are some topics that she has uh, produced beautiful articles about. And also, she's, she's written a book. And uh, I wanted to hear about... Uh, it's not published yet. I don't think it's published yet. We'll find out. It's called Woke Proof Your Life. Woke Proof Your Life. Life. Now, folks, you know that Father O can't stand woke because it screws up everything, it's a bunch of baloney, and it makes people think that things that are right are wrong, and all of a sudden we have a whole screwed up society, and what happens then, we have people who are no longer acting as rational human beings. So, we have with us Teresa Mull today, and she is going to talk to us about how to woke proof our lives. I better, I better get a couple of, you know, cartons of this book and hand it out because I can't take much more. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about your book. Yeah, I can't take much more either, which is why I wrote the book. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't have put it better myself. You know, wokeness is a real poison of society. It seems to be leaching in everywhere. Um, and if we don't stop it quickly, it will consume us and take over our society and destroy it even more than it already has. So yeah, wokeness, it's a, it's a socio-political ill. It's, uh, it's, um, an ideology that the radical left-wing uh, zealots are employing to take over our nation and to control people. First, they scare them, and then they control them, and then they get a lot of power and an earthly gain from it. But uh, we don't have to let that continue to happen. So, okay, like when somebody says this book. expression came out, "I'm woke," it means like my eyes have been opened to what? To the truth? Were they a version of the truth? What? What is this? That's a good question. So there is actually a sample sentence that Google had used for a long time. And if you Google definition of woke, it will appear in many searches. And the sentence is, we need to stay angry and stay woke. And I point out in the book that it's interesting that stay angry comes first. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta say, please excuse me. You know, this whole thing of stay angry, uh, I often look at people who are of the more liberal persuasion, and they have the meanest pusses on in the whole world. I mean, they're not happy about anything. And I, I know the reason why they're not happy, because they don't believe in God, because God keeps us on the right path and shows us there's a lot to be happy about. So the devil tries to knock us off that path and make us woke and make us angry people. I'm sorry, I had to get off on that, because you're going to talk about this too in a little while when we get to the funerals, and why there's no funerals, and, and try, try to get God out of the picture. But go ahead, tell us about woke. Father Bro is agitated, gang. I'm agitated. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I also write in the book, have you ever seen a woke person who seemed happy or even pleasant? <laughs> you wrote you know? that? Great minds think alike. Holy cow. I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's actually studies that show that conservatives are happier and healthier people, people who have a more traditional outlook on life and people who believe in God too and have a church community are healthier, happier, and more optimistic. So it goes both ways. You know, you find God, you're happier and and um, not just spiritually, but physically, it's it's almost as if God told us so. And in our design, he made us, he designed us for himself and vice versa. So yeah, there's a lot of, um, that's actually the, the diagnosis. The point of my book was to try to diagnose where we've gone wrong in society, why we have such high levels of stress, mental illness, anxiety, addiction to opi op opioids. Um, you know, people are more obese than they've ever been. They're microdosing on psychedelics. Why has our world gone so mad? How did we get this way and how do we cure it? So my diagnosis is exactly what you said. We're losing God. Um, you look at polls and over the last 50 or year, so years. Um, and as wokeness has risen, so has our godlessness. So you take God out of the picture, people are empty, they're searching for meaning in their lives. And then the woke movement sweeps in and says, I have something you can fill your life with. It's wokeness, it's virtue signaling, it's 
adulating yourself. And that's been very effective. But as we see, the fruits of wokeness are quite rotten and it's not making our society better. It's making it worse. So, okay. So I say, well, I am woke to, um, sexual oppression. I am woke to racism. All right. Well, uh, what, what does that mean? Basically, what, what, what are they talking about? It's basically a vigilant headhunt. <laughs> so, All right, folks, you a know, vigilant headhunt, okay. Yeah, which is why I think so many of these woke activists are so unhappy. Can you imagine if your attitude towards your neighbor were looking at them with the eyes of, how is that guy oppressing me? How is he slighting me? How is he offending me? How is he, um, you know, being racist toward me or being a homophobe, you know, you're looking for flaws and faults in your neighbors all the time. You're staying angry, right? And you have to look for reasons to be angry because you're determined to be angry. So the whole woke mindset is not a Christian one. It's not, I'm looking toward my neighbor as somebody who has an eternal soul who is on his path towards salvation. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to help him. I want to get to heaven with him. Uh, no, you're looking at your neighbor as uh, this is somebody who's offending me. Let me figure out how and what can I get from this person? I love you know, this. You can know, I get Teresa, I love this. You know, people say when you say something they don't want to hear, I'm offended. I'm hurt by, well, that's too bad. I mean, I'm, and you're supposed to say that, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I didn't mean to hurt you. Hey, look, you're doing people a favor when you tell them the truth. But of course, they don't want right. to hear the truth. Now, in my opinion, we talked about this a little while ago, uh, they have to get God out of the picture. They have to get God out of the picture because, you know, you think God gives us, you know, uh, uh, our life. He gives us our freedoms. God gives us uh, the principles by which we should live. Uh, and uh, the people who are woke, they don't necessarily want God in the picture. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, wokeness is evil, pure and simple. And uh, the people who ascribe to wokeness are looking out for themselves. They want to um, get their prize here on earth. They don't believe in God or else they are enemies with God. They want to be God themselves. I mean, they're literally saying a man is a woman and a woman is a man. Yeah. You know, that's, that's God's job. He kind of took care of that back in uh, Genesis, you know? So um, yeah, these people want to replace God. They want to be gods themselves. They want to be in control of everybody else. They want to dictate um, what we do, what we say, what we believe. And they want to have all this power here and now because they have been offered uh, this temptation from the devil, um, be like gods. And they're saying, yeah, I'll take that. That sounds pretty great. And so now I'm going to trick all these people into doing what I want. And if they don't, I'm going to call them a bigot. I'm going to say that they are Everybody's homophobe. Everybody thought the bigot, a homophobe, anti-Semitic. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, come on. How could you be so many things? People don't even, look, tell you the truth, folks. Most people don't even think like, like that. I mean, you have a couple of dope that think about, you know, hating Jewish people or something like that. You have a couple of folks that are saying, I want to kill homosexuals. For the most part, that's not in most people's heads. But they make it sound like it's an epidemic out there, and that way they try to shut the rest of us up who are saying, hey, wait a minute, whoa, you know, we've gone far enough in trying to destroy uh, humanity as God has envisioned humanity. All right, now, getting to this point again, you wrote something about uh, kind of like, I think it's the, the end of funerals. We have no more funerals. What do we, that's, it was very interesting because I've been, folks, Father O has to do a lot of funerals. I, I meet a lot of people who are dead. I mean, you know, well, they're on the way to dying and, uh, and their families and, you know, less and less funerals. Okay, so could you talk about that? What's going on? Yeah, that's something I've observed a lot in newspapers and just, you know, in, in society in general is that they will often say in obituaries and things, there'll be a celebration of life at a later date and or at the convenience of the family. Yeah. <laughs> they were not taking death seriously anymore. We're barely even acknowledging it. You know, death is icky. It's unpleasant. It's uncomfortable. We don't really want to deal with it. So we don't. And we have the luxury nowadays, um, you know, with create cremation is more popular than ever. And, and you can have this tidy little, um, urn of, of the person you can put it somewhere or not. I guess there's a, there's a lot of times that people don't even pick up their loved ones remains after they die. So this is a trend that's, uh, <laughs> that's really taken off. 
And uh, also, if you look at our nation's cemeteries, this is something I know is happening locally uh, with my own um, in my own hometown. Is that cemeteries are neglected? People aren't being buried. They're not being kept up. They're not being paid for. And people are just basically ignoring death and the memory of their loved ones. And whenever you stop encountering death, um, it really has the effect of uh, preventing you or not preventing you, but, um, you're not coming to face to face with your own mortality as much as we used to. You think uh, about death, you know, even 50 years ago was sudden death was much more common. Of course, we have a lot of amazing technologies that keep people alive for much longer. We have a lot of safety, um, measures that we adhere to so that, you know, people don't, don't die as easily, so to speak. But even after they do, we just kind of shove it off and move on and we don't think about it. So we don't think about what comes after, and when you're not thinking about your immortal soul every day, you're not thinking about, oh my goodness, I wonder if I'm living a good life and what happens the moment after I take my last breath, you're, you're, you're going to act a lot differently in the here and now. So you take the death of death um, is, is a big problem. See, I think folk, people aren't is, thinking about their purpose and why they're here and how they should be acting. This is key. You know, we, we try to ignore death because we don't want to think about the hereafter and, uh, as I said, I've been a priest a long time, and uh, there are less and less funerals, less and less viewings, and for the most part, any funeral we do have, uh, usually the cremains are there, and it kind of makes death something uh, tidy or pushed off to the side. And in many cases, uh, there is not even a, um, a ceremony uh, talking about death as... Uh, Teresa said, it's a celebration of life, and it's a, look, it's like memories of the person, but it's not any kind of like prayers for that person's soul, uh, any kind of a reflection that, you know, this person may have, you know, been a lot of fun in life. You know, we had parties together, we vacationed together, but it doesn't necessarily tell us about, uh, Maybe we'll see this person again in the next life, or maybe we have to think about the life this person led was not very good, and we just beg God's mercy on, on that person. So, you know, Teresa, this whole thing of, you know, not facing death is really not facing uh, God. Uh, you know, our souls are, are no longer important or seen as immortal. Exactly. Yeah. And whenever you don't think about the end goal, essentially, what what are you running toward you know what what is your behavior here and on earth aimed at you know whenever you you start to run a race you're thinking about how to get to to the finish line in the best um fastest way or whatever your goal is but if you don't have an idea of heaven or hell or purgatory or any of those things and you're not thinking about them pretty regularly of course, you're going to live your life just hedonistically, which is what we see with wokeness. You know, you're going to eat as much as you want. You're going to have as many sexual partners as you can. You're going to divorce your husband because you got bored with them or whatever it is. You know, you have no sense of of the guardrails or of a, a loving God that you want to please. So, so you're just, just going to breaks down. It breaks down right. all the barriers. And mm -hmm. it seems to me, though, at the at the end, what's left? You know, what's what's there? Society has broken down. Morality mm -hmm. has broken down. Uh, relationships are, I suppose, just up for grabs. I mean, if you could decide you're going to be a, a girl or a boy and uh, then decide after you get married, you want to be a woman instead of being the husband, you want to be the wife. I mean, st folks, once again, I got to use some Italian. This is stunada. That means this is crazy. All right, this is crazy. That's a technical term, folks. Okay. <laughs> now, all right. I agree. You you also wrote something about uh, love. Okay, and you have the expression today. What does it matter? Love is love. I mean, well, talk to us about woke love. What does that mean? Oh, I quote Thomas Merton in the book, who has a really great passage about uh, folks. The Thomas Merton, he he had been a a, a monk, um, a Trappist monk. Uh, he died, I suppose, uh, forty about forty five years ago, I think. Uh, but he's very well uh, worth reading. And uh, one of the books he wrote was the Seven Story Mountain. So you might want to take a look at that book. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. 
Yeah, he he has some very wise things to say. And one of the things that really struck me about the woke movement was about selfish love. Whenever you say you just love someone for who they are and how they are and for themselves, you love them because they're making you happy, not because you actually love that person. And that's a very selfish love. And that's a lot of what we see in the woke movement and the LGBTQ plus, et cetera, <laughs> movement is that they're encouraging these people to be yourself, which I would also posit they're not because they're, they're encouraging people to get um, surgeries and take hormones and to transform themselves in horrific ways, which, uh, and if anyway, I don't go along, if I don't go along with that LGBTQ plus, then, uh, I'm not woke. And I'm bad. Right. Um, so there are. I don't go along very, with it. All right. I'm bad. Yeah. You're basically asleep. You're not awake. <laughs> <laughs> and you're certainly not angry enough. You need to be angry. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a yeah. very selfish love because they are just encouraging these people to, to hurt themselves. And we know that true love, love is love. No, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is all those things that are spelled out expli explicitly in scripture and at every wedding, basically, you've ever been to. You know, it has all these very, uh, uh, very um, particular stipulations of what love is and true love we know is wanting what's truly best for the other person and i always go back to what are the fruits of the woke movement you know it says in in the bible that by their fruits you will know them the the false prophets and all of the fruits of wokeness are rotten you know the fruits of the lgbt movement specifically um they have something like twice the chance of being prescribed prescription drugs for depression people who are transsexual have something like six times the chance of um committing suicide, things like that. So it's a real mental health epidemic among the LGBT movement and the woke people, most woke masterminds, puppet masters, I call them, are promoting a lifestyle that is harmful to these people, not that just to their souls, we know that, but to their mental health and their physical health. And uh, they're just, they're really unhappy. And the woke people don't care about that. They're like, do it more, be more depraved. It's awesome. <laughs> Imagine producing this wonderful program, Action for Life. It costs a great deal of money. We're going to need your help. So if you would like to donate to keep this good news program on the air, please, please go to your computer, your cell phone, actionforlife.net. Hey, gang, I know a lot of you sometimes can't watch all of our episodes of Action for Life. However, we have a solution for that. All you have to do is go to YouTube and search for Action for Life Florida. And you can catch up on all the shows and guess what, extra added bonus, you get to hear my weekly homily. So YouTube and you make a fine couple. Yeah, I think when you're talking about love, they're basically, they're, they're talking about folks, they're talking about sexual love. I mean, there are the other different, there are different kinds of love, you know. There, there is uh, agape love, which is self-sacrificing love. Uh, there is uh, uh, storge, it, it's, a, it's a term that means um, basically, you know, uh, I, 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 I love somebody, you know, in a, in a, in a, a friendship way, uh, self-sacrificing way, uh, these are different kinds of love. This, you know, philos, that's brotherly love. How I, you know, love somebody because uh, we have a lot of things in common and uh, we, we band together for common causes. So there are different kinds of love. And when we talk about woke love, it, it has to do with sexuality and uh, it runs the gamut. I had somebody tell me a few days ago, um, maybe a few months ago, I forget what it is anymore, that they're pan. I said, what's pan? Well, anything goes. I'll do anything. 
you'll do anything. You know, in, 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 in times past, you say anything. What does that mean? I mean, does it mean bestiality too? And unfortunately, we have some folks going there too. You, you see how this gets, folks. You see how how this gets. It's 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 absolutely pathetic. You know, you want to read a good book about uh, love, the four loves. C.S. Lewis, the four loves. I just mentioned to you. You know, agape, storge, philos, eros. Eros is the erotic type love, and uh, that's for a you know a, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife. Yes, folks. Yeah, man, woman, the way God made them, husband, wife. Yeah, get married, then have kids. Okay. That's the way God wants things. So, you know, when they talk about woke, you know, it's, it's, it's of the devil. I mean, you know, Teresa said that herself. All right. Now, Teresa, uh, your book, Woke Proof Your Life. How do you woke proof your life? Well, seeking first, of course, first and foremost, um, if you don't have a relationship with God, you know, pray for one, try to find Christ in all things. Um, and, uh, that's easier said than done. So I have some tips in there from a Catholic priest. If you have any to offer, of course, you know, it's easy to tell people like, oh yeah, just go believe in God. But you know, that, that is a journey. So I encourage people, um, and they have nothing to lose. You know, so many people who are living in this woke society, they're lost. A lot of them grew up without God, without at least, um, Christian principles in their life. So we must remember that a lot of these people are lost and they, they need compassion and they're searching. So we, as Christians, those of us who have a strong faith need to be leaders and to help our fellow, uh, Christian or fellow to help our neighbors, um, find Christ as, as well as we can and to be open to that. So that's one way, of course, the first thing you should do is, is, uh, is to pray, and pray have faith. get a Bible, yes. go to church. Yeah. Yeah, there's also a, there's a good list in the book too of um, um, suggested reading. Some of the books you just mentioned are there too. So to to help guide people toward a relationship with Christ and a lot of what wokeness relies upon is society being afraid. You know, the first thing that a bank robber does whenever he wants you to comply with him is uh, you watch an old West movie is he'll hold a gun up and make everybody freeze and they're kind of hypnotized and they'll do whatever he says. And that's exactly what the woke people are doing, not with weapons, with physical weapons per se, but with emotional ones, you know, they're controlling us. We're afraid of being called a homophobe. We're afraid of being canceled or being censored. So because we're afraid of these things, we do what they say. We go along with their woke initiatives because we want to fit in. We want to be liked. We don't want to be canceled. Nobody likes to be called, um, you know, mean names and we're bullied. So Christ and uh, throughout scripture, we are told, you know, be not afraid, <laughs> put your hope and your trust in God and, and he will, he will provide for you. So we need to get rid of our fear. And that starts with, with our faith in Christ. Um, I also advocate for people to educate themselves, to put down their cell phone, you know, so much of the fear and division is born and bred and festers in our screens. Uh, we spend so much time on our screens, um, on social media, where these woke, so many of these woke movements. Are, are born and bred and, and grow. And in the mainstream media too, there's so much propaganda out there. And, and you might be a non-woke person, but it has a way of leeching into you, uh, whether you like it or not. You know, you wouldn't open your mouth and let a random stranger put any sort of food into your, into your mouth. But we're doing that with our souls by letting our eyes and our ears um, absorb so much of the woke, of the woke messaging. So we really need to safeguard our senses and be be aware of how we're spending our time and and what we're consuming. Be really conscious of that. Um, I also have a section on boycotting, how to shop in a way that is woke proof so that you're not funding initiatives and uh, your your money isn't going toward evil things. So you put out a list and of, of, of what companies that are woke? I do. Yes, I have a big long list and it can be kind of intimidating because you look at one corporation and it might own 20 brands that you know and love, you know, uh, staple products that that you've grown up using and buying. And, and then um, it's, it can kind of be like playing, I say, woke uh, whack-a-mole, you know, that game where you're trying to, to whack the little moles as they pop their heads up. It's, all these woke corporations are, are always appearing, but the good news is there's plenty of alternatives. And I also have options in the book for places that you can find either non-woke or just neutral companies and businesses, because as we saw from things like the Bud Light controversy boycott, there are millions of Americans who are opposed to this radical woke messaging. And there's, there's a real pushback happening. And
and companies realize that and they're standing up and they're providing the non-woke normal Americans, traditional Christians well, options. You can see that it can be done. I mean, look what happened to Bud Light. That the what's the name Mulvaney with uh, Dylan Mulvaney. I mean, they they mm -hmm. put is that a man or a woman? What, I, whatever it is, they put the opposite on the beer can, and and the whole country says, hey, wait, you know, enough is enough. I don't want to drink that beer anymore. So you know, if you could do it with Bud Light, you could do it with everything else too. So we're gonna you know make sure that uh, Teresa tells us how to get that that list of. We don't want anything. We don't want any woke companies. Please don't tell me that Twinkies are woke. I like Twinkies. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> They might be, oh, no. but, no but <laughs> I offer this um, consolation of sorts. Um, I also have options for, you know, whenever your favorite companies do go woke, um, what you can do, you can uh, kind of go hunting for things like a hunting expedition. You know, you can maybe not in the case of Twinkies, but you can go antiquing. You can uh, go to thrift stores. You can go to your church rummage sale, whatever it is. You know, there's lots of ways to kind of be creative in a woke world and repurpose things, you know, um, get savvy and creative with products you already use, borrow things from your neighbors. Um, you know, maybe you could learn to make Twinkies at home yourself. How, how you or like that? <laughs> Me make Twinkies? I can't even boil water. Anyway, folks, <laughs> this has been a fantastic, a fantastic discussion. Uh, Teresa, we got to make sure we get your book out there because, folks, I want you to be unwoke. And that means I want you to really wake up to the evil that is penetrating into our hearts, our lives, our souls, our families each and every day. Hey, Teresa's for action. I'm for action. And I know you are too. We would like to thank our generous sponsors for their wonderful support. Thanks for watching. Please join us next time for Action for Life. I'm for action and I hope you are too. I'm Father Michael Orsi. I am your host for Action for Life Television, that good news program which talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the big G and the little G, all the good things that people are doing to put the gospel of life into action. So please join us for the next episode of Action for Life.